Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today's video is gonna be a pretty casual one as I take you through some of the first things I've been doing with a network attached storage. So a network attached storage, for those who don't know, is basically a hard drive or a collection of hard drives that you have somewhere in a box in your house that's running some sort of minimal operating system that basically just makes it easy for you to access those files from other devices, whether it be your laptop, your tablet, your phone, any other computer in the house, really, your TV even. And also some of them let you access things from anywhere in the world, and that's what I have as well. So I'm gonna walk you through what I've been using this for. Uh, full disclosure, this is a Synology network attached storage. It was provided by Synology for review. So this isn't the full review yet, but I wanted to give you an idea for some of the things I found to do. And also I'm kind of reaching out to see if there's any other obvious things I should be looking out for to get the most out of this. I wanna make sure I'm running it, th it through its paces. Um, just real quick before we get going on the specs, it's the Synology DS923 Plus, <laughs> which uh, is their 2023 model. I think it's, I believe their newest model in this kind of price range. It has four four terabyte hard drives in it. Uh, that works out to about 10 and a half terabytes of storage once you're in a RAID 5 configuration. And I am using an M2 drive, an NVMe drive for uh, a local cache, which lets it basically make it quicker to access files that are always necessary. Uh, Synology did also provide me with the 10 gigabit per second ethernet kind of add-on for it. My local network is one gigabit. I don't have a 10 gigabit anything, so I can't really do anything with that right now. I'll see for the review if I can figure out something I can do <laughs> to see the benefits of that. But yeah, as for right now, pretty normal network around the house. Everything's just wired up, but let's jump into the screen share so you can get an idea for some of the cool things I've been doing. All right, so here we are on the Mac, and we're gonna take a look at five things I'm currently using the Synology for. And the first is just basically file storage, right? So after you've got it set up, it will show up as a network drive. If you don't see it here, you'll go to the network tab and then whatever you named it should show up here. And so if you go into this, there'll be a home folder. There's also a homes folder. This is a whole other thing. Home is the one you want. I've configured it not to show anything else. And these are just a bunch of folders I've created for on the drive, right? And so I have a better computer backed up here. I have all season one, season two, some other stuff I've done, and then season three is here. So if I wanna jump into the superhuman video, I wanna edit that thumbnail. I've got a Pixelmator Pro document here that I can go ahead and edit. Uh, I can quick look on the images and I can even just play the video. So this is a 4K 60 FPS video and it just plays, right? It does its thing. Um, very little lag, it just kind of works, which is awesome. Um, so let's see, um, so yeah, file storage. I've also got backups of my podcast that I do with Christopher Lolly and Neilion. Uh, so this is all here and I can watch it, I can pull them whenever I need them. And so that's really nice. Um, I've got a documents folder with just generic stuff. Um, some Final Cut files are here because I'm actually using this to edit a Final Cut video. So I'm actually going to use a project stored on the Synology to edit this. So if I open this in Final Cut, we should see in a second, here's the project and I can scrub through it. That all works. When I make changes, there are occasionally delays as it does things like update the uh, render files and stuff, but like it will just kind of work generally how I'd want. So I think if I lower the volume, no, that's pretty instant as well. So. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, it is actually very possible to edit a video um, with the whole thing stored on the network attached storage on my relatively slow in the grand scheme of things, one gigabit ethernet connection. I don't have 10 gigabit, 2.5 gigabit. Everything is one gigabit. So this is about as slow as you can go on a wired ethernet connection. Um, and then some other stuff that's just kind of, we'll talk about this later. We'll talk about this later. And yeah, just things that I want to have elsewhere. So um, that's pretty nice. Another nice thing about this is that all of these files are accessible from anywhere in the world, and that is via Quick Connect. So if I go in to, um, how did I set this up? Control panel? Yeah, control panel. So in the control panel, there's an external access place, and part of 
buying a Synology gives you free access to their Quick Connect service, which lets you basically access your files from anywhere, everything on your NAS, or if you want to configure it, you can actually disable certain things. I have everything available, and that's why I'm blurring out some of this image so you can't tell where it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, you need a username and password to get in. But once you have that, you can access these files from any computer in the world, any device in the world. I have the app installed on my iPhone, on my iPad, and I'm able to access the files from there. The iPhone app uh, and iPad app integrate with the Apple Files app, so you're able to just kind of use the native file picker and access everything there. That's all really awesome. Um, additionally, you can share public links. So for example, let's say I'm, I'm back on my kind of folder here, and let's say I wanted to share one of these videos, or maybe I wanted to share this kind of backup with Chris and Neilion right? This comfort zone folder. What if I just gave them access to this so they could download these videos whenever they want? Easy. Um, I think you can do this from the finder if you install the Synology, Synology Drive app, but I haven't done that. I try to keep my computer as kind of lean as possible, but there is a Synology Drive app here. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and find that comfort zone folder. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to hit share. And now it's going to give me a share link, but this is only for people who kind of have accounts. So this would be for me to access it somewhere else and I have to log in. I can also create a public link. So let's create a public link for this. Anyone with the link can view, they can edit. I'm not going to do that. They can view only, they can download and copy it. And let's require a password of test one, two, three, four. And let's also do an expiration date. Well, we're not going to do that right now. We'll just kind of leave it here. So we'll copy it to the clipboard. We'll save. We're not going to save that password. And there we go. And you can see there's a little icon next to this. So if we go into Safari, say, and open a private window and open this, it's going to say, OK, we need to enter a password. And now that I've entered the password, here's all the episodes. And I can right click them and preview, open in a tab, download. And I think I should be able to kind of just play them in line here. So one thing to know about sharing files with this that's different from like a Dropbox or a Google Drive is that when you're sharing something with someone and it's a large file, the download could be kind of slow. And it all depends on your home internet connection. So I have pretty slow home internet upload. It's only 20 megabits per second. I get one gigabit down, but 20 megabits up. Annoying. Um, but yeah, I am able to kind of basically the download speed for other people is going to be equivalent to the upload speed of your home internet because it's literally being uploaded from your Synology, which is in your home to the person. So that's going to be the limiting factor there, but you can totally do this. I could give them this, they could bookmark this link. And as I add new episodes, they'd be able to see them automatically come up here. It's really cool. Um, if I wanted to remove that, let's just go back to share public link, disable that remove Cool, we'll open up a new Arc private window. And now that link should, it's connecting, and item does not exist, so it no longer exists. So good, that's what we want. And now the icon is gone. So sharing files, awesome. Um, accessing them from anywhere in the world, awesome. Accessing them from within the house and having the speed be enough for me to even edit a Final Cut video on it, triple awesome, love it. So those are the three big things, but there are a couple other things that have really clicked with me. And the first one is Synology Photos, which I did not necessarily expect I would love, but I do because I keep all of my photos in Apple Photos, but I don't like the idea of that being the only place they are. So I've kind of worked around with like using Google Photos as a second backup, but then I'm paying for two cloud services I don't necessarily want, and I don't own the files in either of them. They're kind of in their proprietary systems. What I like about Synology Photos is if I click it from here, uh, this is the uh, Synology web interface, by the way, um, which you can access from at home or anywhere in the world. Um, yeah, uh, you can see my photos, my recent photos. Here's one I took of a couple iPhones. Um, here's a little video I took when I was doing something for the last uh, video uh, showing I own Golden Sun. And yeah, there's just, screenshots here. Um, this is from my PC. But anyway, all the photos are here. If I wanted to share this, for example, there's a share button here. And very similarly to how we just shared um, a link to a folder, you can share a link to a photo like this. All works very nicely. But what's really cool 
is if I go over here and go back to kind of this main ABC directory, again, going into the home folder, there's a photos folder. And inside that is one called mobile backup. And then inside that there's iPad, iPhone, and Pixel 7. And so these are devices I've installed Synology Photos on. And so what I've figured out for myself works best is on my Pixel 7 and on my iPad Pro, I've installed Synology Photos and it basically just every once in a while checks to see if there are new photos and will automatically upload those to your Synology drive and they show up here automatically. You don't have to do any manual syncs. It just kind of works. I think there's a Mac app as well, probably a Windows app, but you can see it sorts them into folders for a year. Inside each year are all the months and then inside there are all of the images. And so here are the images. We've got um, this Lego DQ tree. There it is. And it's just a JPEG file on my computer that I own, that I can always access. If the internet goes out, if I lose my Synology account, it doesn't matter. I still have all these files. That's awesome. So I really, really like that. I like having a real copy of my photos. I find that very, very just comforting, <laughs> knowing that if something happened to my Apple account, my Google account, I'd still have um, all of my photos because you can't get your photos back. So having a backup of my photos um, that I control is something that's just very appealing to me. Finally, uh, if we actually go back to here, um, I also have this media folder. And inside media, I have some videos for my wife. I have a podcast archive. And then I have some quarter digital VFX artists react and stunt men and women react. Uh, and then digital foundry, which is the one I have set up right now. I pay for digital foundries, Patreon, which gives me access to high quality downloads. So again, these are like 4k 60 FPS videos, and I can just quick look on it and it just loads, right? This is just over the network and it's working great. It works really, really smoothly. So, um, but that's one thing. People like it to be easy to watch these videos. So I've, of course, installed Plex on the Synology. I should say all these things are managed from the package center. Um, so we can go to all packages, sort by recently popular, and here are the popular ones. You can install them. It's just like any old app store. If I install media server, it's just going to download it, install it. And in a couple seconds, yeah, it's installing. It's going to run after installation. Give it a second. I did not time out the video for this. There we go. So now it's installed. But anyway, you install Plex the same way. And if I go into Plex, okay, now that I'm logged in, I can see that I have Digital Foundry over here. All those videos are accessible and I can just click into one. We'll resume this video and it just picks up pretty darn quickly. And this is awesome. This works on my TV. It is very smooth, very a very good experience. So for me, it's been the best Plex experience I've ever had. And yeah, I'm just quite happy with it. So that's kind of the deal. Um, I am looking for more to do. Like, I think I can set up a VPN on this. I wonder if that would be useful. I kind of wonder if I can move my Obsidian Vault over to it. I'm not sure I'd be able to access it from my iPhone and iPad as easily as I can through iCloud right now. Maybe that's something to look into. But if you guys have any other ideas, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Uh, that's it for my first look at uh, the Synology drive. I guess as we leave, I do have this 3.6 gigabyte file in my home folder on my computer. If I open up a new tab and just throw this over here to give you an idea of transfer speed, here we go. It's going to transfer and this is how long it takes to go. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.